Welcome to the tutorial for Limiter, the new Dynamics plugin in Entrex Studio. Limiter is a powerful tool that can help you get the best out of your audio recordings and mixes. Entrax Limiter is very good at keeping the audio from distorting, so if you apply it to, say, the master channel, you can rest safely knowing that your song will never clip. And I mean, never. Take this song. See how it's clipping before adding Limiter? Notice the red ticks on the time axis showing where the song is clipping. Now, let's add the limiter. Let's try to squash the levels to the limit to see what happens. No clipping. Let's verify this with meter. See how the song peaks at exactly zero decibels and not above. In this video, we'll go over the technical details of the limiter, including ratio, threshold, attack, release, look ahead, and true peak. We'll also show how the Dynamics Response Graph helps you control and understand your audio. So, let's get started. Before we dive into the limiter, let's briefly discuss the difference between when to use the limiter and the compressor. A compressor is a tool that reduces the dynamic range of an audio signal. It does this by reducing the gain of the audio whenever it exceeds a certain threshold. A limiter, on the other hand, is a type of compressor that is generally used with a higher ratio and a lower threshold. A limiter is often used on the master channel to improve the song loudness and protect it from clipping. While a compressor is often used more creatively to boost the level of individual tracks, to make vocals more punchy, and so forth. N-Track now includes Limiter, Compressor, and Noisegate as three separate plugins, which under the hood share the same engine with a slightly different skin and different presets. Now that we have a basic understanding of the limiter, here are the key settings in Entrax Studio that you need to know to effectively use it. We'll walk through these settings with a couple of different audio examples so you can hear the difference. When makeup gain is off, the overall effect of the limiter is actually to limit the signal level to the top value in the signal graph. When you turn on makeup gain, limiter will add back a fixed gain corresponding to the limit amount so that the overall effect will be to keep the signal peaks at the same level that they were before or boosting the overall loudness. The ratio setting determines how aggressively the limiter will reduce the gain of the audio. The higher the ratio, the more aggressive the limiter will be. Threshold determines the level at which the limiter will start to reduce the gain of the audio. The lower the threshold, the more aggressively the limiter will reduce the gain. Attack determines how quickly the limiter will start reducing the gain of the audio once the threshold is exceeded. The lower the attack, the faster the limiter will start reducing the gain. Release determines how quickly the limiter will stop reducing the gain of the audio once the audio has fallen below the threshold. The lower the release, the faster the limiter will stop reducing the gain. You can play with attack and release to make limiter effective while not being too aggressive. Using very short attack and or release times may result in some distortion. The limiter in Entrax Studio also has two advanced features that can help you get even more control over your audio. The True Peak feature allows the limiter to take into account the True Peak level of the audio. When the signal is in digital form, it's represented as a series of samples. When converted back to analog, these samples are interpolated by the digital to analog conversion to obtain a continuous waveform. True Peak performs an oversampling interpolation to simulate the digital to analog conversion, allowing us to measure the actual peak level of the continuous analog signal, which can be higher than the maximum of the digital samples. Let's see an example inside N-Track, zooming very close into a waveform. N-Track is using interpolation here to compute the value of the waveform between the individual samples. 
you can see how the highest peak of the signal is higher than the highest individual sample. The look ahead feature allows the limiter to detect the level of the audio in advance, so it can more effectively stay on top of rapid changes in volume of the input audio. It's like you had your hand on a big volume fader, and you had to lower the fader when the signal gets louder, say to avoid waking up the neighbors. If you're able to know in advance that the signal will be getting louder, you have more time to adjust the fader to lower the volume, and you can do so more gradually, avoiding harsh jumps in the volume, which could otherwise distort the signal. This can help avoid pumping and other undesirable side effects. Since Limiter needs to look into the future to look ahead at the signal level, in practice, enabling look ahead will make the plugin delay the signal for the look ahead time, which is the same as the attack time. This will add latency to the track, and because of latency compensation, this will be applied to the whole song. For this reason, using look ahead is not recommended during recording or when playing live instruments. Instead, use it during the mixing and mastering phases of your productions. The graph is a visual representation of the dynamics response and of the audio signal as it's being affected by the limiter. This can be a helpful tool to understand how the limiter is affecting your audio and we can make adjustments accordingly. Looking at the signal level, represented in the graph as the filled area under the dynamics response, we can see which part of the response is affecting the signal. The line in the graph represents the relationship between the signal level in the input and the level of the output. When the line is at 45 degrees, it means that an increase in one decibel is an input will result in an increase of one decibel in the output. When the slope diminishes, the increase of the output level will be smaller than the increase in the input level. When the line is horizontal, as it is, say, in the heavy limiter preset, the output level will remain the same even if the input level increases. You can customize the response by adding, moving, and removing nodes. If you want to get going quickly, we recommend starting from one of the existing presets. And we'll use a heavy metal track and an acoustic folk song as contrasting examples so you can hear how they sound. Limiter tracks the current level of the signal using something called Envelope Follower. It can track the absolute peak level of the signal or its RMS value, and it can hold peak values for a while. You can also set the order of the Envelope Follower filter, and a higher order roughly tracks the level more closely. Setting Stereo Link to Off has the limiter work independently on the left and right stereo channels. Set to mean or max, it links how the volume is affected on the left and right channels using either the mean or maximum of the level of the two channels as the controlling signal for the limiter gain. The limiter in Entrack Studio is a valuable tool for improving audio recordings and mixes and can be a big help in making your song sound polished and ready for release. We hope that this overview on the details of the plugin will help you use it effectively and make your songs and productions sound even greater. We'll be using the limiter in the upcoming video on mastering with Entrack Studio. Stay tuned and have fun making music with Entrack. Cheers. <laughs>